Season 4 to this day is one of the fan favorite seasons of the show. It's not as plot heavy as the one before it, but in its place come a lot of favorite jokes, gags, and moments of the series. By now we've developed these characters to the point where we can recognize them immediately, who they are, how they act around each other, how they behave, and now we're at the point where we can start putting them in different situations. And yet, I really don't like this season at all. I keep trying but I can't help but view it as just almost completely useless. And I'll get into that more as we go along, but all the funny jokes and gags in the world can't take away from the fact that not a whole lot happens in this season. When last we left off, Church was ambushed by an unidentified creature, and Red Team had made their way back to Blood Gulch after following a distress signal. Church returns in spirit form to let the others know that there is something among them, but can't get it out before everyone starts interrupting him. This is also the first instance of Tucker's Bow Chicka Bow Wow. Then let's go get this big thing of yours. Bow chicka bow wow. Oh, shut up. I'm ashamed to admit it, but since I first watched that episode back in 2009, I say that phrase all the time now. God damn you, Jason. They spend the next two or three episodes trying to figure out a way back into the base with hilarious results. Eventually, Caboose goes in and calmly talks to the creature, a Covenant elite with no official name but will be lovingly referred to as Crunchbite. After getting Andy to translate, it's revealed that the alien came for the sword in order to fulfill that great prophecy thing that Gary mentioned last season. Meanwhile, back at Blood Gulch, Sarge starts to give the men a motivational speech when Sheila rolls right on by him. And yet, despite the fact that all three of his men saw it go by, and despite the fact that he should have at least heard its engine over the sound of his own ego, he stubbornly refuses to believe they saw it. Simmons is left on his own to repeatedly claim he saw it, as Griff decides to let Simmons hang himself, and no one would ever believe Donut. And this makes up the entire season. I repeat, the entire season is spent with Simmons insisting he saw a tank, and no one believing him. How did it all go so wrong? How? How? I'm not kidding! That's the plot for Red Team this season! Simmons sees a tank, Sarge thinks he's crazy, fucking hilarity ensues! This is the A plot for the season. We focus more on Red Team this season than Blue Team. This is our main storyline. A fucking tank! Now, I'll admit, it could be a pretty funny running gag for a little bit. You know, oh, he's crazy for seeing a tank. But it doesn't deserve to be the focus of an entire fucking season! And this plot is rendered even more useless because the Reds know Blue Team has a tank! They've seen it! They've been blown up by it on multiple occasions! And yet the entire season is spent with Sarge refusing to believe that there's a tank on the loose in Blood Gulch. I mean... <laughs> Despite the, the whole time travel thing, they have not physically been gone from Blood Gulch that long. Or have they? What's the timeline at this point? Time... line? <sighs> time isn't made out of lines. It is made out of circles. That is why clocks are round. No, 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 I mean, how many days have passed? Like, from the pilot episode to now, how much time has passed? Like, where are we? Has somebody mapped this out yet? Worst of all, I, I can't even... I can't even argue this. I really can't, because if I if I do, I'll just get a flood of comments saying, well, the, the first two seasons were pretty much exactly like this. Nothing really happened there, and you didn't have a problem then. The whole show's like this. Yes! You're right! I can't! The entire show has been like this. I have no argument against that. I really don't, except that I guess the first two seasons at least set things up, and season three had a lot going on, so to go from that to just a season full of nothing, it's just... Uh, you see what I mean? Are, are, we, are we starting to understand each other just a little bit? Eventually, Sarge banishes Simmons for being crazy, and if that's not the pot calling the kettle black, then I don't know what is. Simmons spends most of the rest of the season decked out in blue armor and passive-aggressively trying to blow up Red Team, and Sarge spends the rest of the season dealing with Griffin Donut without his right-hand man. If I haven't made this point painfully obvious by now, I'm not a huge fan of Red Team. Their self-sabotaging nature and just overall stupidity aside, because, I mean, Blue Team's pretty stupid too, and I really don't dislike the characters, mostly. But the thing is, 
okay, blue team is where the plot of the sh of the show happens. Like every th every major event happens to them. The the freelancers, the AI, the aliens. Now, everything happens to them. The Reds are just kind of there. They they don't they don't really mean anything. They're just they're just along for the ride. There's no real personal depth here, no emotional connection keeping them tied to the plot. There's literally nothing stopping them from getting in their Jeep and driving as far away from all the freelancer and AI nonsense as fast as humanly possible, aside from the fact that their sergeant is a fucking Section 8. Now, I will admit, they've been doing a better job in recent seasons of incorporating the Reds more into the, the major plot. Still, for a show titled Red vs. Blue, with the first part of that title, the very first word, the group associated with that is basically just cannon fodder. That's it. I mean, it's just kind of... They're just remarkably unneeded, is, is what I'm getting at here. On the blue side of the spectrum, Tucker, Caboose, Andy, and eventually Tex all head out with the alien to fulfill the prophecy, crossing through deserts, swamps, and frozen wastelands. The alien arc is the most interesting part of Season 4, and really one of the more intriguing parts of Red vs. Blue as a whole. It's the only time where we experience an otherworldly entity of a species not of our kind. It gives the feeling of something bigger than all of our characters, the Red and Blue War, O'Malley's quest, and the stuff he puts them through. It really feels like we're on a quest to save a galaxy, hell, maybe even the entire universe. Like the fate of everything is resting solely on the shoulders of these grunts and their talking bomb. It never goes anywhere. No, really. After Blood Gulch, we never even revisit the Great Prophecy or the alien species or any of that ever again. It's just gone, with no real resolution attached to it. Completely open-ended, possibly to be picked up later on down the line, but it's been seven or eight years without a mention. We'll see, I guess. Basically, the expedition reaches a base which is guarded by those religious whack jobs from last season. Texo's in, takes them all out. The sword turns out to have a dual function as a key and unlocks a door that leads to a covenant banshee, where the alien promptly gets in, flies in, and is blown up in. The alien is killed courtesy of Wyoming, in case you somehow forgot that he was still a character in this show. Tex, in a fit of rage, goes after him, and Tucker, Caboose, and Andy, figuring the quest has failed, decide to leg it back home. Charge! Yeah, let's go home. Now, as far as the main season goes, this is the last we see of Tex for a while. However, there's a miniseries that I would be remiss to neglect called Out of Mind. Of everything that come out of season four, this is probably my favorite because it gives us insight into Tex and also a little into Project Freelancer. We meet freelancer agent York, a fan favorite character voiced by Sean Duggan, and his AI partner Delta, and see that not all AI in this world are power hungry evil entities, and these characters leave a huge impact even though York has promptly killed off not long after meeting him. This was the first moment that I started to suspect that Project Freelancer was not just a group of ragtag mercenaries, and that it was in fact a lot bigger than that. This is also the moment where you start to suspect that the whole time travel thing didn't really happen, because at no point during this adventure does Tex turn to York and go, Dude! I gotta say, it's been it's really good to see you again. I haven't seen you since Project Freelancer. You look really well. Hey, by the way, how the fuck are you in the future? Like, how, how did you get here? I mean, I, I guess that it's kind of a weird question to bring up, but she doesn't even bat an eyelash at the fact that her old comrade is a few hundred years old and still as fit as ever. Back in Blood Gulch, Church is now dealing with Simmons, who is mistaken as a blue soldier from the future. He's able to make contact with Command, which is run by Vic's insert number of greats here grandson, Vic Jr., who exists despite Vic's vasectomy, looks and acts exactly like his ancestor, and, like Tex, doesn't even bat an eyelash when Church says they're in the future. Simmons retreats back to Red Base with the news, but Sarge refuses to deal with a traitor until they just agree on a $10 fee, and finally the stupid issue gets resolved, with only about three episodes left in the season. So what have the Reds accomplished this season? Absolutely nothing. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but come on! Upon returning to Blue Base, Tucker falls violently ill. With no other option, Church calls in Doc, who is revealed to have survived the alien attack along with O'Malley and Lopez, and have holed up in yet another doomsday fortress in the middle of nowhere. Pero no tenemos máquina del contestar la teléfono. Apparently Lopez has gone back and forth between the sides so much that now he's just sick and tired of everyone. Still just ahead, though. All three of them return to Blood Gulch as the Reds prepare to make their move. Sarge tells his men that they need to recover Lopez and get back the plans that were stored inside him. You remember those plans? Those top secret plans that they mentioned back in Season 2? It's okay if you didn't. They've barely mentioned it since then. 
They manage to get Lopez back, but because the directions are in Spanish, they also steal Andy while Caboose isn't looking. Replacing it with... Oh my god! Andy! Emotional distress. Oh man, I cannot wait to hear what these plans are. I mean, this has been the red focus for like the last two seasons is getting these plans. So, uh, so tell me, what, what, what do you got here? Is it like a, another robot army, but faster this time? Uh, is it another one of those weather doomsday devices from season three? Ooh, maybe like a high speed fighter jet that can jump to light speed. <laughs> oh man, I, I can't wait to hear this. Go on, tell me, what, what, are, what are the plans? Here are your orders for winning the war. Eliminate the enemy. Okay, also, try to do better than you are currently doing. And please win. Thank you. You know, as I sit here now, I don't really know what I was expecting. Doc finally returns and gives Church the diagnosis. How do I say this? Your friend is... Why are you pausing? Caboose is not going to interrupt you this time. No, that was just for dramatic effect. He's pregnant. Oh, good. Wait, what? Um... Well... Kudos to Rooster Teeth for being progressive? Eh? While Tucker goes into labor, Church takes Sheila and confronts the Reds about taking Andy. Sarge radios in for reinforcements, and in doing so, O'Malley takes his chance and finally leaves Doc's helmet, to where we don't know. Tucker delivers the baby, and we hear alien noises off screen. Church retreats to see it. A baby? Wait up! I want to see! Donut, get back here! Wait for the ship! But Sarge, we don't know when the ship is going to get here! It's coming all the way from Earth! That could take days, or weeks, or months, or even years! <laughs> Well, that was fast. And that's season four. If it seems like I just kind of skimmed over the season, remember, 80% of the season is just random bullshit with the red team, and the other 20% is plot, and most of that 20% goes absolutely nowhere. The only plot in the season of any substance is Out of Mind, which isn't even part of the main series, it's its own four-part miniseries, and Tucker's pregnancy right at the very end. Now, I understand that people don't mind, that they're in it for the humor, and yes, there are some very funny moments in this season that kind of stick with you throughout the rest of your viewing experience. And it's not my least favorite season of the show, no, no. That comes way later. But whereas the first two seasons were setting up, season three was when we really started getting into things, season four is just nothing. It's really just nothing. But hey, four down, one more to go, Blood Gulch is almost finished. I'll see you back here for the Blood Gulch finale, season five. Later, folks.